Hello, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to find the zeros and give the multiplicity of each zero of the given function 3x plus 2 raised to the fifth multiplied by x squared minus 10x plus 25. So the first thing is to find the zeros. What that basically means is that you want to find the x values when the function's overall value is equal to zero. In other words, what values of x will cause this whole side to become zero? All right. So uh, I went through a detailed analysis of how to do this with like 20 or so odd videos of specific examples, um, in-depth analysis, check out our playlist graphs of polynomial functions, and you'll find where to find the x-intercepts. Uh, that's also another term for zeros, okay, x-intercepts. Um, so first thing is we have to get this into fully factored form. Now this is a factor, okay? Here inside of this binomial, we have an x uh, value, excuse me, raised to the first power, all right, and that overall uh, factor is then raised to the fifth. Now that's okay, uh, as long as you have something in here, all right, that is x to the first power. Now the problem here is in this term, we don't have an x to the first power, I mean we do, but we also have an x squared power. So my first goal is I have to factor this fully. So the question is how do you factor this, right? And you're thinking, oh, that looks like a quadratic, two numbers that multiply to 25, positive 25 that is, but that yet add to negative 10. And you might have already said to yourself, oh great, that's just gonna be negative five, right? And you would be right, that's exactly how you would factor that. Uh, so let's finish copying basically the entire rest of the function down. So this is three x plus two, three, if I could write, that'd be nice. Three x plus two raised to the fifth. Now since these two are indeed, oh, and by the way, you could always check yourself by using a program in the calculator. All right, I have a video on how to program this quad function, which is the quadratic, okay? You can solve any quadratic now. If you know the a value, remember the a value is the coefficient of the x squared, which is a one, so you plug in one, hit enter, then you go to the b value, which is the negative 10, right, negative 10, and then hit enter, and then go to your c value of 25, positive 25, you could just type in 25, that's fine, hit enter again, and look, oh my goodness, right? It gives you now the values of your zeros, positive five and positive five. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, this is negative five. That's fine, That's it doesn't tell you the factor value, it tells you the final x value. That will make sense in about two seconds, all right? So uh, what we're gonna do now, and by the way, if you want, you know, check out the link in the description below, I'll leave you a link to program your calculator. So here, so let's take three x plus two to the fifth. Now since these both are the same, I'm going to combine them into one factor. The reason why I'm gonna do that is because this helps illuminate the multiplicity. In other words, the multiplicity of each zero is gonna be equal to the power of each factor, all right? Power of each factor that gave that particular zero value. Now, since I have two factors here, one factor there and one factor there, basically, I mean, you could say you have five factors here because it's to the fifth power. However you wanna think about it, it doesn't really make a difference. But um, what I'm gonna do now is set this term equal to zero. Why is that done? As I mentioned, check out the links in the description. I explained it in excruciating detail in a whole bunch of videos, all right? So this is gonna be x minus five squared equal to zero. So you set this whole thing equal to zero, set this whole thing equal to zero. You don't even need to include the fifth power and the square there uh, because basically your first step is gonna to be to raise each side then to the one, you know, to the, on the left-hand side, you raise it to the one-fifth. When you raise it zero to the one-fifth, it's just zero. So it's just three x then minus two, uh, plus two, okay? And you know, basically you can just take what's inside of this parenthesis and set it equal to zero. Because no matter what, your first algebraic move, so to speak, isn't really gonna do much. Then you divide the three on both sides, right? This is just simple algebra now. This is gonna be negative two over three. All right, negative two over three, that's one of the zeros, okay? This is a zero value. Let's bring that on up. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna square root both sides, right? So I can get rid of the square. And again, if you notice, I can just simply plug in what's inside of this parenthesis now uh, and set that equal to zero. All right, add five on over to both sides. Bada bing, bada boom. X is equal to positive five. And wait a minute, that's exactly what the calculator told us, right? Positive five, that's what it gave us. It gave us the X value, not the factor, but the X value. So. Now what we see is we notice that we have two, fact, uh, two zeros, okay? Two values of x that give the overall function value of zero. And what you can do, you can plug in these x's, right? And you can check it for yourself. 
now. See if it works. And it will. Okay. Um, now, to give the multiplicity of each, right, what you can do is you can now look to the values of the powers, as I was mentioning before. So the zero here, the first zero, we'll say x is equal to negative two uh, thirds, has a multiplicity of five. It's equal to the power, right? And then x to the fifth, remember, arose from this factor. So x was equal to five. And for that zero value, the multiplicity was going to be two. And that's it. Those would be your answers. What you can do to you know gain further insight is you can go graph this thing if you wanted. Open your, open your parentheses then, 3x plus 2, so 3x plus 2. Remember, all a graph is is just a visual representation of what the function's values will be, right? And sometimes, though, visualization helps. So this is minus than 10x, plus than 25, close the parentheses. Now I'm going to go to zoom, uh, standard 6. Okay, so this thing gives us a little crazy. Uh, this is going to be a little hard to see, but... Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it over the over all the work there, okay? Now, anytime you have an odd multiplicity, like you do at negative two-thirds, that will always cross the x-axis, okay? So in other words, you can see here that this value right there is basically negative two-thirds, and since its multiplicity was odd, it crosses. It will actually cross the x-axis, okay? It crosses it. When your multiplicity is even, it doesn't cross the x-axis. If you notice that x is equal to 5, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? So over here, the multiplicity is even. Notice how it doesn't cross the x-axis. Now, since I'm not zoomed in enough, this just looks like a straight line down. But in reality, what's happening here is so it looks something like this. It's going to come down, bounce, touch and bounce, basically. All right, I'm kind of zooming in there a little bit, so to speak. Uh, so anytime you have even multiplicities, it will always do the... Touch and go, you can call it touch and go, or you can call it a bounce, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all it is. All right. So those are some of the patterns. If you want to know a little bit about a little more about multiplicity, check out. I can't speak right now. Check out our video. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. where I explain all about why odd and even multiplicities produce the behavior that they produce on the graph. All right. If you're curious, check it out. If not, no big deal. But I definitely think it would help you to understand why. Something happens. Uh, great. So anyway, speaking about bouncing, I'm going to bounce. All right. And uh, I hope, I don't, do they say that anymore? Do we say that? I don't even know. But I'm going to bounce. See you later.